Ultimately, we want to be able to describe atoms using quantum mechanics. As it turns out, the hydrogen atom is the only one that we can solve um, completely. However, the solutions to the hydrogen atom problem are going to allow us to write approximate wave functions and approximate solutions for all the other atoms in the periodic table. And so this solution to the hydrogen atom is really important because it forms the basis for explaining all of the other atoms in the periodic table. So we're going to go through the solution to the hydrogen atom and do it in sort of four parts. So first of all, we're going to talk about the Hamiltonian. Um, what is the actual differential equation that we need to solve? Then um, look at the coordinate system that we want to use. And then um, because this is a three-dimensional problem, we're going to have to separate the variables and then finally think about what the solutions to that problem look like. So in this video, we're going to talk about the Hamiltonian. So as always, the problem that we want to solve is h hat psi equals e psi. And h hat, as always, is going to be the kinetic energy operator. And I'm going to write del squared here because we have a three-dimensional problem plus the potential energy operator. Um, and this potential energy operator depends on r, which is the distance between the electron and the nucleus or the proton. The potential energy between a positive nucleus and a negative electron is a Coulomb potential. And that Coulomb potential can be written in terms of the charge on the nucleus, so Z, which is the charge on the nucleus, times the charge um, in Coulombs um, for the fundamental unit of charge, which is the charge in coulombs for an electron or a proton, negative for electrons, positive for protons. And we need to square that because we need the charge on the um, protons and the charge times the charge on the electrons, and then um, divided by 4 pi epsilon naught times r. This epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space. And so if we define our variables here, we have Z is the charge on the nucleus, so the atomic number. E is the um, charge in coulombs for um, an electron or a proton. R is the distance between the electron and the proton, as we defined. And this epsilon naught is the permittivity of a vacuum. So if we think about what this looks like, it, the potential is um, proportional to 1 over R, the distance between the proton and the, nu and the nucleus. And so um, as R gets bigger, this is going to get smaller. And the charge on the electron is negative, the charge on the proton is positive, and so this whole thing is going to be negative, so all the potential energies are going to be negative. And so if we draw a picture of what this looks like, as R gets bigger and bigger, um, the potential is going to approach zero. So if this is the potential energy axis and this is the um, R axis, at Large r, potential energy is going to approach zero, and at smaller r, it's going to get more and more and more negative. And so this is what our potential energy function looks like. We've chosen to express this potential energy in terms of the distance between the, proton, the nucleus and the electron. And in reality, the nucleus, the proton in this case, and the electron both have their own coordinates in Cartesian space. So by using the distance between those as our variable for the potential energy, we're really in reduced mass coordinate system. And so um, when we write our Hamiltonian, we want to write that we're solving minus h bar squared over 2 times the reduced mass times del squared psi 
plus the potential energy, which is the e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r times psi is going to equal e times psi.